Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. Official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 66. It says 65 on it, but today is our lesson number 66. I just want to clear up something that happened yesterday. In the last video, towards the very end of the long video, of 27 minutes long video, I made, a, I made an error, I made a mistake, and we were getting strange things on the blackboard. Here's what happened. If you have watched yesterday's videos, you know what I'm talking about. We found the roots of the parabola to be positive or negative square root of 3 plus 2. Now the mistake that I made was this. Okay, listen carefully. When it is negative square root of 3, negative square root of 3 is negative 1.7 approximately. Negative 1.7 and a positive 2, negative 1.7 and a positive 2 should have equal positive 0.3. And I put it down as negative 0.3, which is why it's here. It's positive 0.3 right here. It's positive 0.3, positive, this is 2 plus 1.7, positive 3.7, this is 3.7. This is wrong. This negative point three is wrong. It's right here, and if you put in, if you put in x equal to zero, which is where it cuts the y-axis. If you put in x equal to zero, with with a zero here, you get negative two squared, which is two uh, negative two squared, which is positive four, and we have a negative in front of it. So negative four and positive three is negative one. We knew yesterday. We knew that the y-intercept is negative one, but the way I was plotting it, it was coming out somewhere here. It is actually. The x-intercept is here, and the y-intercept is negative 1, and the correct, the correct shape of the parabola is this one that you see in the blue. This is the correct one, and the reason we were getting up there is because I was putting the x-intercept x, x to be negative 0.3. It is positive 0.3. It looks like this. So now that is, now that is, now that is out of the way, it's clear, because it was bothering me. Now we can do the next part. We are still on problem number 19. And we're going to do the last part, part D. As I explained already in the previous three videos, problem number 19 only has one parabola in the book, which we labeled at part A. And then we did two more, yesterday and day before yesterday, part B and part C. And today we're going to do part D, the very last one, the fourth parabola in the series. And here's how it goes. We are told that we have a parabola that goes through these three points. We have a parabola that goes through these three points. So the question is this. It says describe describe the parabola that contains above three points. That's all. How do you how do you go about describing a parabola? What well, describing a parabola means that we have to uh, give its roots, we have to give its solution. In other words, we have to tell we have to tell where it cuts the x-axis, x-intercept. We have to provide its y-intercept. We have to locate the coordinates of the vertex, the line of symmetry, and then finally plot it. Can we do all that? Let's do it together, shall we? Let's get going. So the standard form of the parabola from yesterday's video is, uh, uh, and not just from yesterday's video, you know it. It is simply ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And we have the three points here. From the three points, we're going to get the three equations. Once we have the three equations, we'll be able to solve the three unknowns, a, b, and c. Those are the coefficients. Let's get going. So let's give this point's name so that as we do them, we can discuss them. Let's call this point P, point Q, and point R. So if we deal with point P, if we deal with point P, point P tells us that when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 3. So y is equal to 3, where x is equal to 3, so we're going to put in 3 here for x. And we end up with 3 equals to 9a plus 3b plus c, and that's our first equation. Let's work on the second equation, which is, from, which is going to be from point Q. Point Q, I'm not going to rewrite the equations. 
point Q tells us that when y is equal to 12, x is 6. Y, y is equal to 12 when x is 6. A, x squared, which is 6 squared, plus Bx, which is 6 times x, plus C. So 12 equals to 6 squared, which is 36A, plus something is going wrong here. It's not the 6x. It is not the b that is 6, it is the x that is 6. So b times 6, which is going to give us 6b plus c. Don't confuse my 6 with my b. b always has this little tail. As you can see, that's the b. This is the b and that's the 6. And that's our equation too. Point P, Q, R. In point R, we know that y has to be 27 wherever x is equal to 9. When, rather, when x is equal to 9. So y is 27 when x is equal to 9. So we get ax squared, a, ax squared, ax squared, which is 9 squared, plus bx, which is 9, plus c, we end up with 27 equals to 81a plus 9b plus c. And that's our equation number 3. We have three independent equations. We should be able to solve for the three unknowns. And once we have the value of the three unknowns, the three unknowns being the three coefficients a, b, and c, once we have the values of three coefficients, we know our parabola. And once we know our parabola, we can describe it. No problem. Let's do it up here. So here is our equation one. Equation one says, equation one says right here, three is equal to nine a plus three b plus c. It's just a matter of paying attention from this point. Do you understand? And there's yes, Swiss equation one and equation two. See what we notice is that c has coefficient of just one everywhere. So we can work on equation 1 and 2 and 1 and 3 or equation 1 and 2 and 2 and uh, equation 2 and 3 and get it to the C and then we'll just left, left with A and B with two equations. Do you understand? Put down equation equation number 2 now. Equation number 2 tells us equation number 2 tells us that 12 has to equal 36A plus 6B plus C. Now we're going to subtract now we're going to subtract the second equation from the first equation. And whenever, you're going, whenever we are going to subtract one equation from the other equation, the equation that is being subtracted, make sure that you immediately change the sign of all the coefficients. So this is positive 12, positive 12 is going to become negative 12, this is still positive 3. This positive 36 is going to become negative 36. This positive 6 is going to become negative 6. This positive c is going to become negative 6, which was the whole point. The whole point of doing this, of subtracting second equation from the first equation, so that we have a negative c and a positive c, they're going to kill each other. Now we have to simply slow down. Positive 3 and negative 12 is going to give us negative 9 equals positive 9 and a negative 36. 36 minus 10 is 26, so it's going to be 27. Positive or negative? Negative, as you can see right here. Negative 27a. And here we have positive and negative, so we get negative 3 b. What we notice here next, what we notice next is that we have a 9 which is a multiple of 3, 27 that's a multiple of 3, this is a 3 that's a multiple of 3. Let's divide this entire equation or multiply or divide rather, let's divide the entire equation by negative 3. If we divide the entire equation by negative 3, we're going to end up 9, negative 9 is going to become positive 3, negative 27 is going to become positive 9a and a positive b. Let's call this equation 4. Are you with me so far? Let's call this equation 4. Again, we work with equation 1, which is 3 right here, equals 9a plus 3b plus c. And now, let's work with equation 3. Equation 3 is right here. 27 is equal to 81a plus 9b plus c. 
Again, we're going to subtract equation 3 from equation 1. We're going to subtract equation 3 from equation 1, and therefore the very first thing we're going to do is change the sign of the, all the coefficients. Positive 27 is going to become negative 27. Positive 81 is going to become negative 81. Positive 9 is going to become negative 9. And the positive C is going to become negative C. It is that transformation of the C co coefficient of C from a positive 1 to a negative 1, because we're subtracting it, which allows us to, to kill these two. Positive 3 and a negative 27 is going to give us negative 24 equals positive 9 and a negative, negative 81. Again, 81 minus 10 would have been 71, so it's going to be negative 72. Negative 72a, positive 3 and a negative 9 is going to give us negative 6b. Again, because I want to keep on going, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to explain every excruciating step, but you should be able to see right away that 24 is a multiple of 6, 72 is a multiple of 6, and 6, of course, is a multiple of 6. Let's divide the entire equation by negative 6. If we divide this entire equation by negative 6, 20, negative 24 becomes positive 4. How many 6 does 72 have? Well, negative is going to become positive because we're dividing negative, negative 72 by negative 6. So it becomes become, become positive. But how many 6 does 72 have? I don't know. 7, has, seven I know, has 1 6. And then after we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 2, becomes a 12. And 12 has 2 sixes. There we go. And when you divide negative 6 by negative 6, we get positive b. That is our equation number 5. We have equation 4 right here. 3 is equal to positive 9a plus b. And we have equation 5. Let's work on equation 4 and 5, and we can get rid of the b. Let's do it up here. Just give me one second. I need a break. So equation four Always use normal numeral to indicate equations or letter A, B, C. Don't use the regular uh, Arabic numeral because it's going to it has a potential for confusion. Equation 4, which is right here. 9A plus B. Equation 5, which is right there. 12A plus B. Let's subtract, let's subtract equation 5 from equation 4. If we're going to subtract equation 5 from equation 4, we must change the sign of the coefficient. Positive 4 is going to become negative. Positive 12 is going to become negative 12. Positive b is going to become negative 12. And again, it is the change in the coefficient of b here. It becomes negative, which allows us to get rid of this b. Positive 3 and a negative 4 is going to give us negative 1. Equals positive 9 and a negative 12 is going to give us negative 3a. If negative 1 equals negative 3a, if we divide both sides by negative 3, it tells us that a must equal 1 third. Voila, we found the first one. We found the first one. a equals 1 third. Let's use the bottom space here to find the b now. How do we find the b? Well, it's very straightforward. We have two choices. This equation has a's and b's, and this equation has a's and b's. We can either substitute the value of a in, in equation 4 or equation 5 and solve for b. Let's use equation 4. Let's use equation 4. Equation 4 tells us, right here is equation 4, 3 is equal to 9 times a, which we found to be 1 third. This is 9 times a, 9 times a plus b. Are you with me? Watch what happens. This is a 9, this is a 3. If you divide top and bottom by 3, 3 is going to go away and 9 becomes 3. So what we end up here is that 3 equals 3 plus b. Subtract 3 from both sides and we find b to be a big fat 0. b is a big fat 0. Not an ordinary 0, a big fat one. We have the value of a, we have the value of b, we can find the value of c. And which equation are we going to use to find the value of c? Again, it doesn't matter, any one of the equations. Right here is equation 1. Let's use that one. Let's use equation 1. 
right here and see what we can do. So it was uh, nine a plus three b plus c. So three is equal to nine a and nine a a we know is one third. Three times b, which is found to be I don't know why I made such a big parenthesis. I thought we were dealing with some kind of fraction. I forgot that it's a zero plus a c. Let's see what we can do. Again, this three is going to cancel out this nine becomes three. So we end up with three equals three plus three times zero, which is zero plus c. If you subtract three from both sides, these are going to go away, and it turns out the c is also zero. C is also a big fat zero. Again, a big fat one, not an ordinary one. And now we have our parabola. Our parabola turns out, where can we put it? Let's put it up here. The standard form of the parabola is this. y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. a is one third, so it's going to be x squared over 3 plus b times x, but b is 0. B times x but b is 0. So it's just 0, 0 times x plus 0. c is 0. They go away. There is nothing there. This is it. This is our parabola. They were asking for the standard form of the parabola. It's right there. That's all it is. Let's plot it, shall we? Let's plot it and see how this parabola differs from the simplest of parabola which is y is equal to x squared. Let's do it here. We're going to erase all of this thing. We don't need any of this thing. Let's just quickly plot it. So, before we plot it, just so that we have our terminology straight, so that we don't get confused, let's call this standard parabola that we see usually, simplest parabola sitting at the origin, y is equal to x squared. We're going to, we're going to refer to this as before. Before, that is before, the, before it is deformed into this. This is the after. So when I speak of before, that's the standard parabola sitting at the origin. This parabola also sits at the origin, but it has been deformed. It, it no longer has a coefficient of 1 with x squared. It has a coefficient of 1 third right here. How does this, how does this look compared to that one? That's what we want to see. So before, okay, here we go. So before, when x was 0, y is 0. It is sits at the origin, as we just said. Before, when x is positive 1 or negative 1, y is equal to 1 because square of positive 1 or negative 1 is 1. So when x is, when, when x is 1, when x is 1, y is 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to go up to, up to here. When x is 1, y is 1. So it sits here. Or when x is negative 1, y is 1. Before, when x is positive 2 or negative 2, y is going to be 4. When x is positive 2 or negative 2, or negative 2, which is why we went up to 4, it's, it's here. And this is our standard parabola before any mutation. This is what we're calling before. Let's call this one f of x. So this is our f of x which is simply y is equal to x squared. Let's call this one g of x. Of course, we have to give it a different name. And let's see how g of x looks compared to f of x. Shall we? So watch what happens. When x is equal to 0, is 0 over 3 is 0. So this, this sits also here. But what happens when x is when x is positive 1 or negative 1? When we square it, we get 1. But it's 1 over 3. 1 over 3 y is equal to y is equal to one third when x is positive one or negative one y is just one third what happens when x is equal to two we're dealing with this one here let's erase all of this thing we don't need it when x is equal to positive two or negative two y is going to be equal to positive two or negative two squared over three 
which means y is equal to positive or negative four third. Here we had one third, here we have one third, two third, three third, four third, right here, four third somewhere here. When, when x is positive two or negative two, it is four third. The coefficient, the, the coordinates of this one are four third and two. Negative four third and two. Let's join this circle and see what it what it looks like compared to the original one. It's the same parabola. It's the same exact parabola as before. It's just that it has gained some weight. It's fat. It's fat. Pleasantly plump, as you can see because the coefficient is now one-third. That's the new parabola. This red one that we just drew, this is our g of x. Right here. And the original one was the f of x right there. We're going to call it a day. Enough of the parabola. We've been at it for the last four days, or today and last three days. We're done with the parabola. In the next video, tomorrow, we will take care of problem number 20 and 21. Number 20 is very straightforward, simple problem dealing with circle, no nothing to it. Is the number 21 where we will have to spend some time. We'll take care of number 20 and 21 tomorrow and we'll be finished with this section. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.